Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. You know how last week we were talking about the ways that we put out a lot of energy and we plan for a lot of things and sometimes it's more energy that we wanted than we wanted to expend. This week I want to talk about the nature of actual reality versus expectation a little bit, particularly around allergies. I don't know if any of you are experiencing the hell that allergy season has been this year in the Northeast, but oh my god, I am in it, y'all. So I have been, for many years, I thought, no longer really asthmatic. And it was such a lie. I'm totally asthmatic. I have not been coping well at all with the entire month of May. I'm hoping that I'm coming out of it now. But I went from breathing just fine and walking every day and going like two walks, maybe two miles each time, to making it to the end of my road one day and going, this was a huge mistake. <laughs> like, I don't know how I'm going to make it back. It was just really difficult. I was using my rescue inhaler four times a day, just excessively for me. I mean, you can do that, but you probably shouldn't. And I know this. So after, sadly, it took me a while to like cue in on, you can't go outside. So then I was trying to wear a mask to go outside and that wasn't working either. Then I was waking up in the middle of the night needing my inhaler. I was like, okay, something is terribly, terribly wrong with how I'm living. So I finally reached out to my doctor and asked for um, the steroid inhaler, like the daily one that helps you manage manage your life and manage asthma. And now that I have it, I'm actually doing way better. I'm able to go outside. I can walk again. I'm not I'm not perfect. I feel like I'm I'm breathing okay, but it didn't get rid of the nasal congestion. So the lung part is fine. I'm actually not wheezing anymore, but I cannot sleep well because my nasal cavities are just like clogged. So I wake up in the middle of the night and like, I can't breathe. And I'm so dry throat, dry mouth. It's just gross. I'm sorry to share all that with you. But the point of sharing that with you is to say that sometimes what we plan for ourselves, our expectations for ourselves, and then the reality of what we're dealing with are so divergent that we get caught out and faced with, oh my God, I've planned so much. I'm doing so much. Hint, this has actually contributed to last week's like dilemma where I'm like, why am I so exhausted and why can't I handle life? And why am I just put out about everything? This is a big one. When you can't breathe <laughs> and you're not feeling well, it makes it really hard to put out energy in any other area of your life. So this week is talking about accommodation. How do we accommodate our actual limits when we finally acknowledge that we have some? <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous to say something as simple as like, I know I have allergies, and then me trying to headstrong plow through them as though they don't freaking exist. And that has been honestly, like the last four weeks of my life experience is me just being bullheaded about it and going, it's fine. I'm fine. I'm better than this. And telling myself these weird mental stories that do not negate the fact that my lungs do not want to breathe pollen. My nose apparently just says, no, it said, no, we're done. And it's been difficult. It's been difficult to even like record stuff <laughs> because I have to cough and drink a lot because I'm not breathing that great. And it's just allergies. And it's something that can be managed if I choose to manage it. So huh, sometimes we have to take a look at our life and maybe step back far enough to recognize like, hey, this is a solvable problem. Why aren't you solving it? So I had to like put my little coach pants on for myself and be like, hey, Blaze, you have a problem here and you're not dealing with it. Why aren't you dealing with it? And sometimes I guess we don't deal with things like this because we have weird internal dialogue about judging ourselves for it. Like, I really want to be someone who doesn't have allergies. I wish that it was possible for me. I'd like to believe it's possible. Like, I really, really, really want to believe it. And I guess the, the thing that I want truly 
is to believe that that's possible for me without any outside assistance, without any mitigation, without any accommodation. And the truth is, I can live a mainly allergy-free life if I'm willing to treat it if I'm willing to recognize what I'm allergic to and accommodate that and recognize that maybe going out on the really high pollen days isn't the way that I need to exercise, maybe I need to do some indoor stuff. Maybe I need to worry about like air filters and things like that in my house. Maybe I need to brush the cat out more, like just things that aren't necessarily a part of my everyday routine. Maybe they're weekly, maybe they're monthly, but I need to step them up higher in service of the reality that I'm not handling something well. So how many times do we do things like this in our business, in our relationships, just in general, in parenting, where something starts to skew a little out of control or there's something that needs to be acknowledged that is out of balance or out of whack, and we attempt to act as though the thing is not happening. We go a little bit into our denial mode and we have our it's almost like a spiritual bypass is what I want to say. Like we're just going to bypass the fact that there might be some lowly negative emotion or thing happening that we'd actually have to do something about. We don't want to do that. So we just pretend it's not there and we try to be nice. So (laughs) how can I even relate that to allergies? I don't know, but I definitely see that in myself in conversations, um, in the way I even speak to myself when I make mistakes, (laughs) I'm just like, I'll just be really nice about it because I'm a good person. And I know I didn't mean bad, but then when it comes down to it, if I want to get better, if I want to fix something that's gone awry, I need to acknowledge that it exists. That's like a number one. And instead of just saying, it's okay, you did your best, even though that's true, you can't stop there. It is true. Okay. You did your best. That's really important. And what can happen next? to help this get better or not happen again? How can I become actually better? That has to be the follow-up question. And sometimes we don't like the answers that we get. Sometimes we don't like what we hear from others or what we even know in our own hearts. So I am sending all of my heart empathy out right now because I am feeling that so deeply (laughs) this month and last month that living is hard And we want to be the best people that we can be. We have images of ourselves as being compassionate and being loving. And so many of my listeners, I know like you're hugely compassionate and hugely understanding and hugely forgiving of others. We need to turn that in towards ourselves as well and not just pay that lip service and be like, oh, okay, self, you know, I did a great job and it's okay. We have to truly like have the ugly cry with ourselves sometimes to go, We tried really hard and it didn't work. We tried really hard and we're not the person that we hoped we were. Our bodies aren't doing what we wished they were doing and it just sucks. And sometimes we have to grieve and we have to recognize that despite our best efforts, you know, like that's what I'm noticing right now is despite my best efforts, asthma has not miraculously disappeared from my life. It most of the time is gone. It most of the time is better. I can absolutely celebrate that. I have done a great job of you know, making physical activity a part of my life, making sure that my area of living is clean and that it's breathable. And yet that doesn't fundamentally, you know, make me a different animal. It doesn't change the body that I'm in. It doesn't change fundamentally what I'm dealing with. It has gotten way better. Yes. I can't undo reality. And that's so hard. It's such a hard pill to swallow. But how can I acknowledge and accommodate that and still have the quality of experiences that I'm aiming for? So I think that's a good question to ask ourselves when we're dealing with something very frustrating and something that we don't want to admit is true or that we don't want to be true about us. And then we're like, ah, but it just is right now. Maybe the questions that we can ask are around, how can I still create the quality of experience that I want? Instead of determining that the answer I want is no asthma or never, never have a flare up, never have anything. Of course, that's what I want, but it may happen. So when it does, how can I still create the quality of life and the ability to do things that I would like to experience? And for those of you with way worse things, more chronic illness than just an occasional asthma flare up, this is hugely a part of your life is recognizing, okay, here, here it is. This is reality. 
and I'm only dealing with so much energy. I'm only able to do so many things. So how can I make those experiences, the quality of experience, that's the best that I could hope for? And I think that's a good question. And it's one that lets us come up with answers and helps us come up with priorities too. What are the things that we really want to experience? What is the nature of it that we're hoping to achieve? Because when we get really specific about a physical reality that may or may not exist, it's difficult. If we talk about a quality of an experience, we can have that with it looking many different ways. So I like to think about things like how am I connecting with others? How am I able to have some physical movement in my life and maybe feel some physical relief, right? Like stress, tension. How can I feel like I'm moving towards a more healthy version of myself? The key being that it's still myself. I can't actually just switch bodies and be in someone else's body. None of us can. I know we've been kind of sold that idea (laughs) through watching social media and TV, like do this, do that, eat this, and you'll suddenly like transform your body and be amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Is it that though? Or can we just be the best version of ourselves? The best version of us is unique and it always will be. So I'm coming to terms at this particular late stage in life that I deal with some stuff and that's okay. And it doesn't make me a bad person. And it doesn't mean that I'm not able to still have an active life or be able to, you know, enjoy like playing with my cat or running around and like roughhousing with my daughter, it does mean that I need to recognize that I only have so many strenuous moments that I can experience in a 24 hour period without triggering an asthma attack. Currently, I'm still in the thick of it. Like I'm definitely in a management phase. And I know, just as I talked about last week with the ebbs and flows and ups and downs, there will come a time when I'm on that upswing and I am able to do it almost indefinitely. And my endurance is really high. The reality is right now it's really low. That's tough. It's a tough thing to face, but it just is how it is. Whew. So I wish for all of you that you're being kind with yourself about your actual limitations, whether that's physical, whether it's mental exhaustion, whether it's financial, like whatever it is that you're going through to have a moment of peace with that that we are where we are today. Where we are today is probably a step up from where we were before. And it's a step down from where we hope to be in the future. But it's always going to keep improving because that's our intention and that's the way we're living and that's the way we're striving. That's awesome. And when it's not great, it's okay. It's part of the ride. We're all human. We deal with setbacks. We deal with harsh things that we wish weren't true that are true. We have disappointments. We have devastating news. We have things that take us by surprise. And when those things happen, we need to take them into our heart with love, with compassion towards ourselves and go, wow, this is tough. This is something that's happening. And right now I need. And man, I wish for all of you that you really ask yourself that question more frequently during the day. It's something I'm endeavoring to do now way more often. I'm trying to be more introspective that way. Because when things get busy, it's easy to forget ourselves. But the question to go, what do I need right now? What is my body calling for? Or what is my mind nudging me towards? What is my emotions trying to tell me? Am I stressed out about something? Do I need to just have a moment and a sit and think about it? Is my heart racing? Do I just need to have a sit down? Whatever's going on, may you find the way to be with that and love yourself even as you're with it because it's part of who you are and every day in every way we're going to get better and better i do love that sentiment too i've been thinking about a lot as well so every day and every day ah, every day and every way (laughs) we are all improving and we're all improving our ability to love ourselves to appreciate ourselves and through that be able to see others and really appreciate the journey that they're on as well When we're able to appreciate ourselves and our pain and our stuff, we're able to just notice in others what they might be going through and how they're feeling. There's so much more empathy there. And I like a world in which we all acknowledge others and see each other 
I don't know, with this awe that we're all handling so much stuff. Mm. Sending you all tons of love, lots of hugs. We're all in it together, and I will see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com, where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love, and I'll see you next time.